Welcome to the channel. This is Andre of Gaming Hardcore, and welcome to another Tree of Savior video. And for this one, we're gonna do an archer farming build, which consists of musketeer, bead piper, and hunter. And as usual, we're gonna test it out on the fields and state the reason for why each of these classes are here, and maybe show how I go about using it. And to clarify, this build is a planium farming build. And with all that said, let's do this. Here we go, there's the Musketeer, the Peed Piper, and the Hunter. And before we start, I'm just gonna say that this build is wearing all legendaries and weapon with 10 transcendence and more. I don't wanna elaborate, but this savior right here is geared in terms of equipment. Attributes on the other hand though, is just 50 and below. And for the cards, we have 3 MOA cards installed because the place where I use this for farming planium has a lot of demons. So I can one hit or two hit them most of the time and uh, what else I'm sure I'm forgetting something just ask below if you have any questions uh, oh yeah we're using good equipments here because this farming build kind of sucks for farming if it's not geared so right off the bat I'm saying to you there are better options than this but it's very usable to say the least so let's go check it out Okay, Musketeer. So Musketeer, to put it simply, is the best single target archer class. And for farming, this delivers the right damage output that we need to quickly eliminate monsters for a decent rate of farming with the use of its skills. So what are those skills that we use for farming? First up, Grooving Muscle. Yeah, that level 1 skill, you get so much for it. And it's one of the reasons why we took Musketeer in the first place. So what does level 1 Grooving Muscle do? It ignores 30% of enemy defense and gives you a 30% chance to do a triple critical hit. Yeah, that's straight up 30% and it's not based on your critical rate. So this is really good. Keep this up at all times. One downside about this skill is it only lasts one minute and the cooldown is one minute so it's kind of tedious to use and they should have made this a passive skill or a skill with 30 minutes duration but that's just me the next skill we're gonna show is headshot and snipe both of those skills are primarily used for single target but snipe kind of hits target close to the main target so yeah I only use this when I see a monster that I know I can't one or two hit. Those are mostly elites and non-demon monsters. Next important skill, the area attack skill is covering fire and volley fire. Both those skills are area attack skills and hits multiple targets. But has to be somewhat close to the main target or else it's not gonna hit more enemies. And that's the weakness of Musketeer. It sucks for hitting multiple targets. If the right condition for the skill, it's not meh, but you can kind of fix it with Falconer, but we don't have that in this build. What we do have though is Hunter, which kind of helps, and we're gonna go explain Hunter after this last Musketeer skill. And that last skill is Prime and Low. This basically resets the cooldown of Snipe, Headshot, Volley Fire, and Covering Fire. So this is another good level 1 skill. Use this right after the aforementioned skills. Okay now for Hunter. So Hunter is a class that utilizes the pet system. And it's here because of hounding and growling. I'm not saying the other skills are useless. I'm saying growling and hounding is very useful for planium farming. The other skills are not, but they are good in other ways. So anyways, hounding, what does it do? So what it does is it gives you additional loot chance and for farming loot chance it kind of helps <laughs> now growling this is your screen wide taunt and it also makes enemies unable to move and attack so this is a very good skill in combination with musketeers volley fire and covering fire but i mostly use this with volley fire 
because it deals more damage if enemies are in the right distance. And with the help of growling, you can get that distance for maximum effect. Bad side about growling is cooldown is a bit too long. Okay, Peed Piper time. Now, Peed Piper is a double damage buffer class, to put it simply. It's here because of 2 times 15 seconds additional 100% damage death. And you can achieve that if the only flute skill you take is the double damage skill. Because one of the Peed Piper skills can recast a learned flute skill. So if you don't learn the other skills, the recast is forced to recast the double damage skill because that's the only flute skill recastable. And yeah, I'm not gonna pronounce the Peed Piper skills because I'm sure I'm gonna butcher it. But to make it clear, this is the double damage skill and this is the recast skill. Those skills are good if you're auto-attacking enemies or just buffing your party members. And this is how I go about farming Planium. I usually go outer 15 and this is how I do it. First, I go in a spot where I can taunt the most enemies. Then I wait for them to go near the pet. Then I use Hounding for the loot buff. Then el I eliminate enemies by using Volley Fire and Covering Fire. Then I go wait for the cooldown of Growling. And I auto attack enemies while waiting. And then when the cooldown of Growling is over, use it again. And do it all over again. So that's how I do it, mostly. Okay, I guess we're done stating the reason why those classes are here in this build. Now I guess it's advantages and disadvantages time. So for advantages, I can only think of a few. First is additional loot chance that can be shared with a party member that's also farming. I know Tomotorge loot chance buff is way better, but if you have a pal that's using a Tomotorge for farming, you can use this on top of that, and that's more loot chance. Another thing is the double damage that can also be shared with your party. And it also helps you eliminate more monster faster. Now for the disadvantage. And it's very noticeable that compared to SR and Omyoji class, this build is slower. And I only use this when I'm bored using SR or on Myoji. So basically, there are better options. But I gotta say, this Archer class build is very strong against boss monster. But it doesn't have anything to do with farming, so eh. <laughs> but anyways, at least this build shines on a different aspect of the game and is also usable in farming. So I guess that's a good thing. That's it guys, that's another T of Savior video, <laughs> 3 of Savior video. I hope you guys like it, and subscribe if you wanna see more of this. And this is Andre of Gaming Hardcore, see you in the next one.